In this coding guide, we have a little bit of a different kind of challenge. So right here, what we have is a Ruby class, and you could think of this if you work with Rails as this being some type of controller. And inside of it, we have a initialize method that takes in one argument called word, and it stores it as an instance variable so that it can be used by other methods. And specifically, we have a method here called hidden content. And the goal is to be able to pass in a word, and if hidden content is called on it, then it will automatically add a comment to the front of it. So in other words, example would be if you have a word like that's a string like my word just like this that instead of printing it out as a string and having it rendered normally that if you call hidden content on it that it would add a comment just like this however one of the requirements is that we need this to have a method called commentize that is called on it and we have to use monkey patching but we can't affect the rest of the program we can only use it for this controller so how exactly could we do that we do not want to do something like this so when we've talked about monkey patching before we've talked about opening up a class like this and here we could call a we could create a new method called commentize on it and this could do something like this where it takes in a string and inside of the string it performs interpolation and wraps it up like this. And the reason why we don't want to do this, and as you can see, this will work. So if I say my word dot commentize, just like this, if I run this, oh, I have a misspelling. If I run this, you'll see that it works and now our word has commentize in it. However, this isn't the behavior we actually want because let's imagine that we have an application that also needs to add HTML comments, which HTML comments don't look like this. HTML comments would look like this, where I have a, a angle brackets, something like this, and then my comment inside of it and that's how a comment looks in HTML and then you might also have one in CSS which my comment would look like this so what we don't want to do is we don't want to open up the entire string class to add this commentize method to it because if we do that our entire program anytime commentize is called is going to do only the Ruby specific version and that's not what we're looking for so this is a perfect spot for being able to use what are called refinements so I'm going to grab all of this and I'm actually going to paste it up here just so we can see it above the controller and instead of opening up the class what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new module here and I'm going to create a module called Ruby content and I'm going to indent all of this so all of the monkey patch work that we used is going to go inside but instead of opening up the class I'm actually going to use what in Ruby is called a refinement so I'm going to say refine string and refine string takes a block. So I'm going to say refine string do and then inside of this now all of this code remains exactly the same. So now we're going to have a module called Ruby comment that opens up the string class. But now watch what happens if I try to do this. So let's say now if I try to say my comment and call commentize on it. Now if I try to run this, it has a no method error. So even though I opened up the string class, I didn't open it up in the traditional sense. Instead what I did is I simply opened it up 
and said, okay, this is only going to be refined whenever someone starts using the Ruby content module. So the way to get this working, and if I, I'll show you that it's not working yet, if we come over and run the tests, if I run our spec, January, this is going to be for the fourth, you'll see that this fails because an undefined method commentize is there. So this method, even though it's a string, is not going to work yet because it doesn't know about the commentize method. And so our test, all it's doing is it's just instantiating a new Ruby class. It's passing in a string for the word, which is our word right here. And then we try to call hidden content on it but this isn't working yet because this content controller still only has all of the core Ruby classes and modules available to it. In order to make this work, we simply have to say using Ruby content, and now watch what happens. If I go to run the test now, you can see that these are all passing, and let's just actually open this up, and so I'm going to copy this, paste it right here. And so now we have our code. So I'm going to have a class instantiated and store it in the variable CC. And now if I call hidden content on it, now it will actually print out my string. So it takes in the variable that we passed in and now it does it using the Ruby commenting syntax. Now, an interesting thing about this is because I'm outside of the class, this commentize method is private and it's only accessible while I'm in the class that says using Ruby content. If I were to come down here and say that I had some type of method that just returned the word. So in other words, if I made this an adder accessor or something and I was able to call cc.word and have this printed out, if I tried to do cc.word.commentize, even though the class has access to it, the uh, outside of it, so calling it from out here, that would not work. It only works inside of the class that says using Ruby content. And you may not think of this as a huge deal, but where it becomes incredibly handy is, is ensuring that you don't have any weird kinds of side effects. So what this allows us to do is think of it being almost like a sharpshooter for adding new functionality to built-in classes. So now we can decide when this commentize method is going to be called exactly like this. Now the really cool thing about this is, let's say that we have something like this, where this is our content controller, but we also have something that is you know, like a, HTML controller and inside of it we'll say using HTML content which is a module we have not created yet and then I can just come here and grab all of this code and everything here stays exactly the same I'm going to call it HTML controller just like that and now what I can do is I can do this exact same thing. And by the way, I did not plan on doing this before the video. I just had the idea halfway through. So if I have any errors, this was not a planned thing, but we'll see. Okay, so I have HTML content here. I'm going to refine the string. I'm going to call commentize on it. But now instead of having this, uh, our little hash symbol the way that Ruby does it, I'm going to have the HTML syntax. So I'm going to have this. And now let's see if this works. So I have my HTML content. Everything here is the same. I have my Ruby version. Now let's see if I come down here. And now I'm going to have a HTML one. So for this, I'll say HTML, and this is a HTML controller. This will be 
my HTML content. And now I should be able to call HTML hidden content, and this should comment it out in that way. So I'm going to save this and let's run it. And let's see if this works. Scrolling down. And look at that. So right here, we're able to call the same method. So we're calling hidden content, and inside of the classes, we're still calling commentize. But instead of having to have commentize available to everything in the string class, now we can be really specific with where it's going to be used. So this is a great way to properly organize your code and be able to use it in a way that just makes more sense and where you won't have those kind of hidden edge effects and those negative side effects. So that is how you can use refinements in Ruby to be able to isolate when you perform monkey patching.